is an article that was recently published in the Daily Mail with the following headline. Terrified Peruvian villagers claim they're under attack from seven feet tall aliens dubbed face peelers as they plead with the authorities to send back up. Here's how the article goes. Terrified villagers in a rural Peruvian district have claimed that they have come under attack by seven feet tall aliens they have dubbed Los Pelecaras, or the face peelers. Members of the Iquitu tribe from the San Antonio native community have reported mysterious figures in dark colored hoods attacking the villagers who live in the rural district of Alto Nene, north of east of Lima, Peru. After one such attack, a 15-year-old girl had been taken to the hospital. According to the community leader, Jairo Davila, the teenager narrowly escaped, but as a result of the struggle, they cut, pat, uh, they cut part of her neck. Now, According to local media, media, members of the community are conducting night patrols to protect women, children, and the more vulnerable villagers and have called on the authorities to send in the military. Some community members said that they can't sleep because they are in fear. Locals described these extraterrestrials as having large heads and yellowish eyes and said the mysterious figures are immune to their hunting weapons. They claim they have attacked them every night for nearly a month since July 11th. Latina Noticias, a Peruvian news outlet, quoted Davila as saying he had come face to face with one of the so-called aliens. So this is a direct quote. We have met almost face to face. His, fa uh, his face is hardly visible. I have seen his whole body floating at a height of one meter, end quote, suggesting that, uh, that the being was hovering. The group have now requested a military presence from the authorities. However, it, re it reportedly takes a 10-hour river trip to reach the community from, the Iqu from Iquito City. Now, before I go into my thoughts on this story. I want to lay out my views on the whole, do I believe aliens are real or not, Ken Andrew. Have I seen an alien or came across evidence that is so compelling that I had no choice but to believe? No. But from a mathematical standpoint, they have to be real. It would be nothing short of foolish audacity to think that an observable universe, approximately 95 billion light years in size, would only have life on the equivalent of one speck of dust in the Sahara Desert. But be that as it may, I'm not comfortable with the idea of them walking amongst us. That's why when I read this story, I was a little shook. But nonetheless, still a little skeptical. I mean, was I really going to start looking at contingency plans based on the testimony of a couple of jungle Mexicans? No, no, absolutely not. Uh, they are out there doing that ayahuasca, mixing it with that Peruvian marching powder. And they're not reliable witnesses. See, I am used to making contingency plans in case of invasions. I grew up in a war zone in sub-Saharan Africa. And the rule of thumb over there, if you want to survive an armed conflict, is if you look outside your window and still see white people out and about, you're in the clear. Your friend could come to you freaking out. Oh my God, the rebels are coming. The rebels are coming. If, if white people are still strolling on by, you still got time. 
Because when shit hits the fan, white people send planes to pick up other white people. That's when you know you got to get out of Dodge. You saw those Afghans holding on to those planes for their life. They knew what was going on. So it's the same approach that I decided to take on this whole alien business. White people are not freaking out. Everything is fine. And then it happened. White people came on TV and admitted the unthinkable. Jesse, the terrifying receipts. If you believe we have crashed craft, uh, stated earlier, do we have the bodies of the pilots who piloted this craft? Biologics came with some of these recoveries, yeah. Were they, I guess, human or non-human biologics? Non-human, and that was the assessment of people uh, with direct knowledge on the program I talked to that are currently still on the program. We arrived at the location at approximately 20,000 feet in the controller called Merge Plot, which means that our radar blip was now in the same resolution cell as the contact. As we looked around, we noticed that we saw some white water off our right side. It's important to note that the weather on this day was as close to perfect as you could ask for off the coast of San Diego. Clear skies, light winds, calm seas, no white caps from waves. So the white water stood out in a large blue ocean. All four of us, because we were in F-18 F, so we had pilots and Wizzo in the back seat, looked down a small, saw a white tic-tac object with a longitudinal axis pointing north-south and moving very abruptly over the water like a ping-pong ball. There were no rotors, no rotor wash, or any sign of visible control surfaces like wings. As we started clockwise towards the object, my Wizzo and I decided to go down and take a closer look with the other aircraft staying in high cover to observe both us and the tic-tac. We proceeded around the circle about 90 degrees from the start of our descent, and the object, ob object suddenly shifted its longitudinal axis, aligned it with my aircraft, and began to climb. We continued down another 270 degrees. We went nose low. It's official. Our alien overloads have arrived. And I can say that I am prepared. Because not long ago, I once again binge watched the 2016 US network hit show called Colony. And I feel like I have an understanding of what our new masters expect. Total and complete obedience. I'm sorry to say that half of you modern women are not gonna make it. They have a zero tolerance policy for SAS. You will be sent to the moon where you will be used as fuel. Spoiler alert. My only problem is why am I finding this out now? Because by the sound of it, the government has been in possession of this information for decades now. How many alien probe victims have we laughed into an early grave, claiming to have seen or been inappropriately touched by beings not of this world. Some as recently as a few weeks ago. Jesse, the receipts. But I am telling you right now, that mother that mother back there is not real. Say whatever you want. I'm telling you, I'm getting the off, and there's a reason why I'm getting the off, and everyone can either believe it or they cannot believe it. I don't give two f but I am telling you right now, that mother f that mother back there is not real. And you can sit on this plane and you can die with them or not. I'm not going to. And there's a reason why I'm getting the f off and everyone can either believe it or they cannot believe it. I don't give two f but I am telling you right now, that mother back there is not real and you can sit on this plane and you can die with them or not i'm not going to we owe that woman an apology certain things should not be classified we pay you our taxes to be on the lookout and report to us when you see something especially when it's something that will now going forward, alter the fabric of life on this planet as we know it. Absolutely preposterous. 
And that'll do for the show this week. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. We really appreciate it. Please don't forget to share, comment, subscribe, and hit that bell notification button so you know when we're uploading new content. We're trying to reach 5,000 subscribers before October, so each and every form of engagement helps. Until next time, stay propositive.